In the not too distant future, next Sunday, AD, there was a guy named Joel, not too different from you or me. He worked at Gizmonic Institute, just another face in a red jumpsuit. He did a good job cleaning up the place, but his boss didn't like him, so they shot him in the space. Keep in mind, Joel can't control where the movies begin or end Because he used those special parts to make his robot friends Robot, we'll call Cabot, Gypsy, Tom Servo, Cruel Seconds to commercial sign. Hey everybody, I'm Joel. I'm marooned in outer space on the satellite of love, and I'm the subject of a bizarre movie watching experiment. Now, I guess uh, so are you. I'm up here with my two homemade buddies, Crow and uh, Tom Servo here, yeah. And uh, we're working on Tom Servo now, I think, uh, trying to fix him up. Hey, watch what you're doing there. It's the only torso I have. Commercial sign in 15 Whoa, seconds. Well, I think I found the problem here, oh, buddy. Boy. Some kind of a uh, computer virus happening Oh, here. grody. It looks like a magnetic tapeworm. Uh, yeah. Commercial sign in 5, 4, 3, 2. Commercial sign now. I got it. Uh, you'll be ship shape in no time. We'll be right back. Don't go away. You'll be real gone. All right, that ought to do it, buddy. Hop down and grab yourself a lollipop. Oh, I feel like a new man. I don't know what you did, but my back hasn't felt this good in months. I'm cooking with Crisco now. <laughs> Funny, you don't look any better. Uh-oh, you guys look downcast. The big cheeses are calling. Come in, Joel the Mole, my little frosted sponge cake. <laughs> hey, sirs, what are you wrecking today? Oh, nothing, really. We're just kind of hanging out and, you know, let's... Larry, oh, it's magic time. Make with the invention exchange, plebe. Well, as you know, even avid smokers can't stand the smell of a tar belching pipe. And so I invented this, the Neverlight pipe. It's got a sophisticated uh, sprinkler system built in with a smoke detector. So anytime somebody oh, tries to light up, see, it puts it out for you. See, I'll try it on there. Ouch. Like that, they should never, ever be able to light up with this no thing. More. It's not supposed to work. Oh! Well, what do you think, sirs? I think it's almost as clever as the Prince Albert in a can gag. <laughs> I love that gag, it's great. Better let him out, he'll suffocate. <laughs> now get ready for our part. Larry, Larry, now Larry and I have discovered that children adore putting things in their mouth and they love puppets. We've combined the two, put a little spin on it. We call it tongue. Puppets. The show, Larry. Hey, everybody, it's me, Mr. Skanky. Oh, I love everybody here. Dr. Lewis Everhart and Dr. Clinton Forrester. <laughs> Bye. I think you might win the award for the most unsanitary toy. Well, thank, thank you. you very That's much. really nice. Yes. Well, well done. congratulations. Absolutely. It's about nice time. Oh, brother. We well finally done. got one. Excellent. It's about Excellent. time. Yeah. It's great. Right. Uh, oh. Your film today, Joel, is a little teen exploitation film called Untamed Youth. And, uh, well, it stars the grand dame of pimply teenage romps, the queen of adolescent angst, Mamie Van Hooter. Doran. Doran, Mamie Van Doren. It's got hip cats, cool chicks, insensitive authority figures, and a few show-stopping production numbers. Enjoy, if you can. Oh, we got the movie star. let's go!
Oh, Those boy. scientists are just geeks. At least it's a Warner Brothers picture. Sounds like it's going to be one of those teen exploitation things. Hey, I hope it's a cartoon first. Oh, Western. Anytown, USA. Looks like he's playing football against Claude Rains University. How much do you want to bet the word daddy owes in this film a million times? Hey, after him. He's hiding behind those credits. I think hiding from the police would be easier if this was before harvest time. At least he'd had some corn, you know. I think there's going to be a lot of corn in this. This is like the Stephen King book, Children of the Dirt. Hey, hide, quick. Hide in plain He's sight. roadkill. Look at that. Don't ever play chicken with two cop cars. Can't win. Thought you could hide behind the credits, huh? <laughs> Works every time. So he stole an onion. What are you gonna do? Is that the primordial soup? Hey, there's a girl in my soup. <laughs> Don't worry, she won't eat much. <laughs> okay, come on out. Will you go away first? Oh, that'd be neglected duty. Well, well, at least, least they're around. not unbathed, you. You're not much of a gentleman. It's the Maytag repairman. I he does look watch. lonely. Now get out. Hiya, Midge. Oh, hi, Landis. What you doing, vision? No, just sexually harassing a few teens. They're swimming with their high heels on. Oh, no, no, you stick to your cotton picking. My cotton picking what? Nice tag. Oh, good. I thought they were going to put their luggage on. Huh? What? So, I understand you two are untamed. How old are you two? 22. 36. 21. That's my locker. No 21 to me. Where do you live? Duquoin. Do what? Duquoin, Illinois. The biggest county fair in the country. Sulky races and everything. That's where we got our start. Home of the fighting ducks and the glass bottom boats. No thank Songs, you. Songs, dances, skits. Don't any. bother briefing him. Where were you going? To LA. What you mean were? Just that. Pick up the stuff. You you mean you'd take us in just for swimming around in that pond? We were so hot and we walked for miles. No one would pick She's us up. He's still hot. Hitchhiking's also against the county code. Now pick up that stuff and let's go. What a grouch. There's no room for our stuff. The back seat's filled with a jazz combo. No, no, no. Baggage in the back. You in front. Now you drive it into town and I'll meet you there. Quit playing that sax. Meanwhile, at Mount Vernon, may not seem a serious offense to you, but there have been two murders involving hitchhiking in the last seven months. And I committed both of them. In one case, a hitchhiker killed a man for his car and money. Just for snoring too loud. In the other, a hitchhiking girl was assaulted and murdered. Her name was Pina. You are vagrants without visible means of support. Oh, I wouldn't say that. The country. You have pled guilty. I now sentence you... To death? Jane Lowe. And you, Penny Lowe, do 30 days confinement. Hmm? Huh? Now that may seem harsh to you. Because it is. But I'm going to give you a choice. You may serve your sentence in the county jail. Or you may serve it as agricultural workers on a ranch. Green Acres? You will be jail, please. Jail. You will do healthy outdoor work for which you will be paid. 
They look healthy enough. And you will regain your self-respect. Oh, here's your person. We never lost it, Your Honor. What about this movie? Real Major stoic Toys, judge. They call her Stoneface. Agricultural. We'll take the healthy outdoor work, ma'am. So decreed. Like I care. Jim. Mitch. Oh, Bob. What a wonderful surprise. It's not very judge-like. Oh, Good to see you. I've got a thousand things to tell you. Oh, excuse me a minute. <laughs> Court's adjourned until tomorrow morning. Then there's going to be a big party. Got out of the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> big deal. With her for a mom, that guy's got a life sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, right out the door. Come right Cookie out. teeners. Come on, take move. Any really groovy city, USA. Looks like Tom Waits' hometown. Tire farming. It's hard, but it's worth it. Somewhere out there is the Ark of the Covenant. In a radio. Oh, I hope it's not the Von Trapp family. I hate them. Hey, it's the body snatcher pod wagon. All right, this is old pile out of the pile out. Come on. Looks like one of those Why clown cars. It is a clown car. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Get a move on. They just keep piling out. Lou well, Gossett Jr. will be out here to chat cold. with you a little Party later. Before. Employment at road camps. Ah, the original cast of the Dirty labor, Dozen. In your case, cotton picking, is not to exceed two dollars and fifty cents a day for each day. Of course, it's only right and you should pay for taxes. your room and board. So the code goes on to say, the net credits to each convict's account shall not be permitted to exceed seventy-five cents a day. That's your take-home pay. However, it may console you to know that you're doing a noble thing here. Gregor. Help and get in one of your country's vital crops. Now, in addition to paying for your room and, board and medical expenses and so on, you also got to pay, and I quote, Pro Mabel. Lost a reward for capture and escapees from the Mabel. Camp, which reward is hereby fixed in some of And Mabel. Now, that means if any of you monkeys escapes, enough dough will be taken from the daily pay of the rest Monkey of you dough? to make up a kitty of $200 for the reward. And if you land on free parking, you get it back, which is great. Just figure you're on an honor farm. <laughs> You can grow on her like that? Well, some more crows to follow the big red machine. What the hell does that mean? Looks like his hat is welded to his head. What do you have to call his convicts for, mister? He pick 400 pounds a day, I'll call you cotton pickers. Say, I like that. Hey, you, quit hopping around. How old are you, baby? 19. But how did you know to call me that? Because of the feet in your pajamas. That's what everybody calls me. Baby. <laughs> I should think so. You'll be perfect for my experiments. Mm, bookend. We're sisters. Oh, wow. How do they tangle with the law? Hitchhiking, vags. We're not vagrants. We're on our way to L.A. for a booking. We're entertainers. Oh, yeah, Singers. I bet. Uh, that's what this place needs. Entertainment. I myself dabble in ventriloquism. Will you stop right, bouncing Angelo, around back there? These people squared away. Show them where to sleep and sell them some work clothes. All right, kids, follow me. Killer sax, man. What kids? <laughs> well, here's the cotton picking and a little gal cotton pickers. <laughs> Shut uh, up. Uh, let's see, uh, 20 bucks a head, that's uh, 140. I know. Me. I know. I have that much in my skin. This goes right into a new TV set for the wife. You should put it in a bank. <laughs> posh, posh, come with daddy. Here. Yes, sir. 
Hey, little man. Come here. Huh? What were you doing in the house? I was just bringing you today's tallies, Mr. Trump. You look real pretty in lipstick. Works well, every time. No lipstick. Go okay. draw your time. You've got 15 minutes to get off of this place. But, Mr. Trump... Get I... your pay and get lost. Am I the sultriest person you've ever seen in your whole entire life? Oops. Fred, I'm home. Oh, it's you. Oh, you Hi, missed Russ. a spot. What's the matter, honey? I'm not finished yet. Yes, you are finished. You just washed yourself out of a housekeeper's job. Why, Russ, what in the world? I warned you about chintzing around. I warned you about that guy, Jackson. I told you that that was the last time I was going to warn you. I'll get your clothes and get out. But I'm wearing my clothes. Oh, no, Ross, please. I'm sorry, honey. I promise you I'll be good. Please, Ross, I've worked hard for you. I've done everything I could to Say, make you happy. Say, she is friendly. And another thing. Don't do any talking. Or bragging. Or spend the rest of your time in the county clink. Hogan! Tramps, male or female. Now get out of here. Get to feeling like a rolling stone. Haven't got a place to call. What are those? Home. I keep ending up with nothing. And the time is flow. Rolling like a rolling stone. Want to know that guitar that makes amazing sound. Hey, really look, it's Greg Brady. Brady. Check out the town lever action. Town. Nice fulcrum. Big towns and small I can towns, see a lot of corns from here. You know, it really makes me miss the potato and so cotton fields of Earth. Hey, it's Blonde I Lemon Jefferson. <laughs> Anyone uh, want a snow cone? I could go to the galley. Like a rolling stone. Uh, well, the show's already started, but I can seat you up front. And the time is flown. like a X nay on the ump bay and Rhine gay. Get out of here, you people! Tell him, Greg. You got I ain't interested in seeing. This is really gonna make the reunion show hard. Greg's back from Sweden and he looks way she just different. Got out of the hive. This is my bed. What do you mean? This is where they put me. It was mine before. We're sisters and we're staying together. I don't care if you're Siamese twins. Cat you're fight. Father, you big trollop. Trollop What's fight. That mean? Trollop. Trollop, my dear, means a soiled dove. A fallen mm -hmm. angel. To uh, put a sweet need hey, a lady Hey, it's Lenny and Squiggy school. <laughs> you take that back or take a beating. Take the beating. Okay, come on, if you want an Italian haircut. Huh? Extra moose or something, I don't know. Break her neck. Oh, break her neck. Greg, buddy, it's me, Tom, Tom Servo. Kill her. Harder. Scratch your eyes out. Come on, kill her. Wow, right in the eye hole. Oh, he's blind. That's real funny. Real good, Greg. All right, I'll break it up. Oh, sorry. Excuse Who's me. Who's the big winner? I got winner. Come on, I'm ready. Don't hit me in the mouth again. You'll break. 
break my dental plate. Is what you call entertainment? Well, you missed the big Cossack hey, number. You take a different, better, a broken plate. Now, what do you say? I say, Uncle. I say, Aunt. I say, wow. <laughs> I advise you two to save your energy for the fields. You heard? You? I don't know what he expects from them. They're untamed. Angela, get the rest of these people on to chow. All right, kids. Get dressed. Everybody to chow. Now, what was this cat fight all about? Don't call me a cat. You got a wild cat yeah. temper, I'd say. I asked a question. It was over my bed. It was oh, not over your bed body. <laughs> All right, that's enough of this nonsense. Remember what I told you a little bit. You're halfway back to the pokey right now. What about the Gumby? Cotton picking creep. Oh, save your energy. He's all business. Yeah, all kinds, including shady, fishy, funny. Dopey, and sneezy, business. grumpy. I guess if we I get them all? want to fight, we will, huh? Feel, but that's okay. Oh, no. You're too tough for me. Oh, Come on, let's get go to town, kid. Come let's on. go eat at the mess hall, huh? Would you like that? Whoa. Wait a minute. I gotta get dressed. Hey, are you ready, you guys? Ready. Yeah. Okay, today we'd like to present our pageant, Greg Brady, an American Legacy. Mm -hmm. Greg Brady, the eldest of Mike Brady's three boys, began his public life at the age of 14, when his widow or father married Widow Carroll, who was bringing up three very lovely girls. He lived with his large family in a very spacious split-level house in a Los Angeles suburb. He attended Warren G. Harding High School, where he was considered dreamy. Life wasn't all peaches and cream for Greg Brady. The pressures of a huge step family often caused things to go wrong. Sharing a bedroom with two brothers would cramp Greg's style. He later proceeded to move into the den and made it very mod. Mm -hmm. He wasn't ready for the den life, so he moved back to the security of his brother's room. But again, he felt crowded and he eventually settled in the attic. The attic was good for Greg. There he blossomed into a man nurturing his singing career, just trying to forget the troubles of growing up, like the time his hair got turned orange. Or when Bobby left his jumping frog in the back of Greg's car when he had a date. Oh, the carnage. Anyway, but that was his past life. Life was good now. In 1971, Greg was receiving 6,500 fan letters a week. That and his studies at Harding High kept Greg busy. Mm -hmm. Then in 1974, Greg was faced with the biggest shock of his life. His family was canceled. Without a primetime audience, Greg's world began to crumble. There were attempts to revive his family, but none succeeded. He had hit rock bottom. Greg couldn't even get a suite on a love boat. Brady, Brady lunchbox in hand, Greg headed for New York. Musical theater would give him a last chance. He appeared in the Broadway production of Pippin, but then disappeared. <laughs> it seemed America had lost Greg Brady. He was nowhere to be found until Christmas, 1988. Greg was found at a hospital in California. It was him. It was Dr. Greg Brady. He had become a doctor, Greg Brady. He returned to his boy home, boyhood home with his entire family, and a very Brady Christmas was had by all. Thank you. What? Greg, Greg Brady, we have the satellite of love. Salute you. You're one of the good ones. Thank you, Greg. You are groovy. Good pageant. Yeah, I, work. I thought it was pretty good. A tribute to someone I love. Hey, it's Evil Knievel. What you got, Buster? Telegram? All right. Mr. Trop? Right. Bob Steele. Hmm? Oh, hi, I'm Rod Iron. How are you? Glad to meet you. Your mother called me about you. Say, you sure look like her. Thanks, I'm taking <laughs> steroids. 
Haven't forgotten how. Nope, I can run one. Good, you're on the payroll as of now, regular rate, and glad to have you. Well, thank you very much, sir. Now, I don't know if you're into weird scenes or not, but check this in. thing out. I grew up here. How's the place look to you? Swell. You really have it fixed up. Really like your Looks dirt. Great. Takes money, though. The easiest part was getting your mother to sell out to me. Yeah, I know. She that does that a lot. She got so she hated around here. She wrote me in Formosa she was going to sell out. Gladys! That's Gladys. But I was just going to the store. Come on. Bob Steele, this is Jack Landis. Bob's going to take over your job. I want you to handle a field crew on Q Ranch. I'll go get my gear. Oh, great. First guy I meet hates me. Fine. There's cooking facilities there. We can eat with the crew down at the mess hall. Okay. Lattice, come here. Salad oil? Get rid of that. I'll drink and it. Landis. That's no way I to pack a reserve chute. you job again, you'll be off of here in five minutes. Go join your crew. Okay, kid. On your way. Man, that kid sure looks good up on that combine. Put some spurs on him, make him seem to show tunes, he'll fit in real fine. Nature's rich bounty, corn, soya bean, sorghum, speckum. Mining, agriculture, an untamed youth forging an untamed land, eating their weight in cotton. Men naked from the waist up, watching days of our lives, day after day. This is their story, the valiant few who dared to be different, who dared to dream. Monster cars patrolling the highways and byways. But in spite of this bumper crop, prices may continue to rise. Why? Because of the acute shortage of labor in many parts of the Southwest. Hey, he's got a car payphone. Howdy, Mr. Trump. Hiya. Uh, I love that guy. Yancy? Collingwood? Well, Mr. Trop, looks like you're going to have your cops picked clean and bail in short order. We just have noticed going by your fields. You got plenty of hands working for you. Two That's per right. person. Picking cotton. Our crops are ready and ripe. Soon they'll be rotten. I made you not. Rotten cotton. You said you could get us labor to pick our fields. That's right. I take 60% of your harvest, you get 40. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Drop. You said 50 50, you now, said. Now, look, fellas, you took my time. You've been talking to me about this for two weeks. That's the what deal. I get the lot? labor, you push me around in a wheelbarrow dressed as one of the honeymooners. Your choice, pal. For you is better than a dead loss. But I'll be needing over 100 hands. 200 for me. Where'll you get them? Where'll well, we get the wheelbarrow? You need 300 pickers? All right, I'll get them. That's my problem, but that's not the question. The thing is. Do you take the deal? What can I do? I don't like it, but I'll take it. Uh, sorry about my friend back yeah, there. He's so kind of I. a hothead. Let's find a way to squeeze him out, huh? It's Tears right. for Fears. Watch it there, will you, boy? Or Indiana Bones. trash in with a cop. We don't want leaves and stems. No, you just want something for nothing. You asking for a belt in the belly? I think you look like the pet shop so boys. you're looking for a workout, huh? Yeah, do you have Nautilus or uh, free weights? Body by Bob Denver. In the bailing shed. Now there's a woman outstanding in her field. <laughs> Good one. I mean, I'll never wear anything made of cotton again. Oh, we gotta get us some jeans and some flat shoes. What with? We got credit. Remember what the man said? Oh, 30 days of this and I'll... 28 starting tomorrow. Chihuahua. There goes another fingernail. Yeah, now that you bit it off. Come on, guys, we could help him. Stupidest crook in the world, he steals cotton. Oh, you ain't gonna make a... Cotton picker out of me. Boom, boom, boom. No, you ain't gonna Shut make up. 
Don't even start. You know, the acoustics in that cotton patch are fantastic. Well, they sure aren't going to make a singer out of him. Look at that popcorn's enormous out there. Elvis has left the cotton field. Hey, get me, I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> look at that, must get real lonely in the field. Look at that. Hey, look, way in the back, it's Eli Whitney. <laughs> Just kidding. Fortunately, he's got uh, guitar strings embedded across his chest. Gilligan. Skipper. Marianne. Jenner. Which one of those two have rhythm? I can't tell. Hey, stop playing your sternum. Strange alliances are made in a hot cotton field. You know there's girls there. Yikes. You know, there's a lot of rhythm in this scene. Makes room for no acting. This is sort of like up with people in prison. You can make me sing, or make me dance, make me rock right out of my pants. Yikes. You know, interesting enough, this scene was included in the film Scared Straight. What key is that in? I like doing that to the kids. <laughs> hey, it looks like he's driving the swamp from MASH. What's the matter? Oh, I'm dizzy. It's so hot. And Poppy's made her sleep. What's the matter with her? Too much oh. sun. She's too hot. I gotta go and shave. She ate too much cotton. Some water. Oh. It's okay. Oh. Hey, nice field boots. Look, field's chock full of them. Boys, too. What's the matter with her? She almost passed out. Too much sun. Let's get her in the shade. Open the door, eh? Well, come on. Mm -mm. Here. Now roll the windows up. Uh, oh, wait. That's my motorman's helper. Thanks. I'll be all right. All right. All right. She can stay here for a while. You better get back on the job. And I'll start pounding corn liquor. You're afraid of the boss, huh, Landis? Oh, not at all. Unless he's doing his spooky face. Tell him. She might need a doctor. Well, I'll, I'll have it. I'm in charge of this crew. I'm a barber. We'll they used the to be doctors. Well, since no one has any more lines here, let's just uh, wander off this way. Hey, it's the Donna Frost, Reed no. show. Honey, you could have phoned. I thought I'd catch you with another man. Oh, oh they I left hours ago. So if you don't start coming around more often, sit down here. Oh, oh no. not there. The cat's been sick. Bob show up? Oh, sure. I put him right to work. They handles that harvesting like a real expert. Bob's a good kid. Yeah, he seems to be. Do you uh, think it was smart sending him to me? After all, there's lots of other places he'd work. Well, I want you two to get to know each other better. It'll make it easier when we have to tell him. That he's an android? Oh, Russ. Why can't we bring things out in the open? All right. And ruin the whole setup? Oh, cease, that's crazy. Things might start to get shaky as it is. What do you mean? Labor's so scarce this season. The other ranchers are beginning to bellyache. It's only natural when they drive by my places and see I've got crews at work. Well, maybe it'd be only fair to certify some prisoners to them. Fair? Fair? I'm not interested in what's fair. I'm only interested now, this... in stuff that makes my head look bigger. You know that I spent $2,000 like in the right places to get those county orders. Another 20 years, it'll look like Boss Hog. I chunked in a big wad of dough to get you elected, too. 
Oh, no, this is my idea. I thought of it, I made it legal, and I'm taking the profits from it. And All you can't them. play with my Tinker Toys either. Who else in the Valley's got cotton pickers at 75 cents a day? Why, they die Jolly Green Giant that. does. There's gonna be a lot of cotton plowed under this year for lack of help to pick it, but not on my places. I'll have a monopoly. Boardwalk Park Place, think of it. After this harvest, and I'm using rich. the shoe. And next season, I'll be wealthy. Is he gonna sing you now? Mean we'll be. <laughs> of course, I meant we. Well, of course, but you'll be oh, dead. <laughs> I wish we could just skip a year right now. Yep, so do I. You using Denerex, honey? Hey, honey. I just pulled a big one. I'm harvesting for Yancey and Collingwood. I take 60% as my share. They're good farmers and they've got a fat crop. Oh, that goes to you, fill God. your fat You're little really cheeks. Helping them out. Where in the world will you get enough hands? Get well, it. I know where two of them are right now. I like obstacles. <laughs> I know. I put enough in your way. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you sure played hard to get. Yeah, you left the phone ring twice. I wasn't, really. Yeah, got a shove. Bye bye. Oh, please stay for dinner, Ross. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't. Well, at least a drink then. Your favorite lover boy. Gin Hot and gin and tonic. <laughs> no thanks. Ross. <laughs> what is it that's so important this time? The way things are going, I sometimes think we should break up. Gee, you mean it, Grandma? What does Uncle Dad have to say about that? Don't ever say that. Don't even think it. At least not until the crop's in. I'm not sure to say it. But I need you. I need you. Tooth inventory. I'll stay for that drink. And we'll forget all about business for a little while. And just think about genetics. Oh. Boy, I hate this. Man, my eyebrows look great over there in the mirror, though. <laughs> Enough with the bouncing already. Hi there, Jenny. Oh, hi. How's baby doing today? Holding her own, I guess. But what she's asking me to call her anyway? squeaky now. Gee, I don't know. Some people just can't take this kind of hard work. She was yeah. muttering something about uh, Ford and dry clicking a toy gun. But your honorable mom didn't bother to have a doctor check any of us. He's going to start singing, he ain't going to make a cotton wear out of me. Wait a minute, this is a bag of rayon. Pretty good. We'll make a cotton picker out of you yet. Not on your cotton picking life, <laughs> Funny. Wonder what she wanted. Forty. Hey, who's the guy in the cage? Well, that's my brother cousin. He likes soda pop. Well, at least the bag is cotton. Really, we can get something for that. We were supposed yeah. to reap? I yeah, thought we know. were sewing today. Because I speak Spanish. Gosh. I wish I could get a sitting down job. Why don't you call a temp Gym service? Down. Igor, Igor. 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 Mm. The two heads, you'd still be a moron. Would it be a two heads? Hiya, Fuji. <laughs> you know, prison was never like this when I was there. Huh? Now anyone not behaving spends a night in the box step. Going to a party at the county jail. 
Problem with today's youth. This is how their image of prison is. Hey, look at me, I'm still stupid. If anybody dances with me, it's by accident. Hey, we gotta eat on that table. Get off. Ooh. Ask me about my extra chromosome. <laughs> hey, I got a girl, I got a girl. Oh, how'd you find out I was a geek? Oh well. <laughs> Jerry Lewis, geeky guy, denture wearer. Oops. Hey everybody, get me, I'm doing the Abe Lincoln. Gregory Peck this week on Solid Gold. Yeah, I planned it that way. That's right. I knew that. No! It's Vic Tabak! Oh, Mel. Caught me in. Just a short intermission, men. I need two dishwashers in the galley. I want two volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'll take you and you. Ooh, I ain't no pearl diver. Well, that's not a requirement now for washing dishes. Up, my friend. I am a just man. Even a philosopher of parts. Possibly the most erudite bum for miles around. An actor of but sorts. But in this day of crass materialism, with dog eat dog and man bite man. Come on, speed it up. I claim that the laborer is worthy of his hire and the artist of his due. Be a square at the fair. What kind of gum beating is that? Chihuahua. As Major Domo of the kitchen and as field marshal of the mess hall. And I whistle master of the junior high baton squad. But I reiterate, I am a just man. And I claim that labor is worth recompense. Your pale be pumpkin pie. A whole one with whipped cream, man. And you got it made. This way, boys. If only beatniks had just stuck with pumpkin pie. Yeah, let's go. We should get out of here. Suckers. Every segment ends with food for some reason. Yeah, you know, I'm hungry. What was it you were hungry for? Um. The other day, I was helping Joel with a very important project. We were on a satellite of love, and boy, if I wasn't there, it really would have gone badly. Gypsy lies dormant, her central nervous sympact temporarily shut down. I'm helping Joel, who's working tenaciously with the skill and cavalier quality of a dermatologist performing his 50th routine face sanding. Ugh. We were on the satellite of love. And there's a line by adjusting the left horizontal gyro and synchronizing the output signal with the feed input signal on Cambot's digital array motherboard. What are you doing? Um, what are we doing again, Tom? Uh, we're linking a Gypsy's cerebral data disk to Cambot's visual output device. Take a look at what she's thinking. Can I help? No, last time you helped on a project, we had to jettison a whole pan of burning rock candy into deep space. Can I watch? Yeah, but just be careful and don't touch anything. Okay. I think I got this thing all figured out. Let's hook it up and see what happens. Input 3B. Okay, got it. All right, it's all hooked up. Let's see how she looks. Just turn on Gypsy's higher brain functions now. I'll do it. I, I, no, I'll do no, it. let me do it here. I'll okay. get it. Cambot, just roll back the entire contents of Gypsy's brain and put it on the main viewer. This won't take long. Shh. Well, this will be the first time anyone has ever been able to see what a computer is actually thinking. Well, there it is. What is it? Oh, it's an 8x10 of Richard Basehart and some RAM chips. Oh, brother, another great mystery of the universe explained. Well, it could be worse. How? It could have been uh, Bobby Eubanks she was dreaming about. True. Hey, everybody. Oh, hey, hi, girl. girl. How you doing? Oh, I had a dream. I know you had a dream and we were all in it, right? No, none of you were there. Oh, boy. Oh, Cambot, flash forward out of this turkey. We actually oh, saw brother. what you were thinking, Gypsy. It was really... 
Hey, Crow Buddy, come on, what's wrong? What are you doing? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I was daydreaming. What did you say? I was just... We got movie science! Big surprise in Gypsy, I guess. Yeah. Dancing at a party when Joe nice set. came with Pete, but yeah, I nice radio too. Oh, oh you. Hey, I didn't know she could sing. I still don't know she can sing. Young Fifteena, love my Joe. Sweet. Nice percussion section. Let him know. Listen to that hi hat. Got the clue now at 18. Charm, he's got class, and all the women love him. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's my Joe. Oh, blah, baby. Love him so. Puppet show. Thank you. Never, never, never let me go. I love to love, but just with Joe, when I'm with him, we go, go, go. He's my Joe. Oh, how many dishes do they have to do? A fork each? Never, never, never let me go. Sixteen weeks on Star Search. They call her coffee because she grinds so fine. Blondie, come here. You have more than a modicum of talent, my dear. Oh, you mean Thank these? You. Thanks very large. You know, it's a shame you started heisting banks at such a tender age that got you in this predicament. But I feel that it's the duty of we who are older to help the talented young. You know, this gift of yours should be brought to the attention of someone who can help you. Half? To it, Mr. Trough. You know, my dear, in this area, there are many homes equipped with a large electronic box. It's called a refrigerator, but that has nothing to do with my story. And appear pictures that so fascinate the citizen that they sit in front of it for hours. Well, pick me up off the bridge. Somebody's got to take that guy out of the rain, huh? Very perspicacious. Um, what does this Mr. Trop have to do with it? Mr. Trop, my dear, has a not inconsiderable financial interest in Kahula City's Kahula City. You know, a promise is a vacuous thing that's brought to a point. I'll consult Mr. Trump on the intercom. If you know all this, why is he still a cook? Little electronic Pinky device called a Trump. phone. Pinky calling Mr. Trump. Station Chow calling headquarters. Earth all to right, cook. Pinky, Mr. Trump. You may not be aware of it. That phone doesn't look like it was made for a human head. Who sings Especially like an not angel. his head. And looks we haven't like decided if that's human or not. Get to the verb, Mr. Trump, I, I'm surprised at you. Very surprised that you didn't jump at this opportunity. I suggest after she pays her debt to society that you give her a tryout on your TV station. Look, I have nothing to do with the programming, Pinky. I don't know anything about it. That hasn't stopped you from farming. Look, I'm no judge of singing. Sir, you are but to hear her mellifluous tones and see her beauty. Plural. And you would no more judge her than you would a flower. Pretty articulate for a slap cook. A little blonde with a sister? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, I'll listen to her. Send her up here to the house. Thank you, Mr. Trop. Thank you. Now you go right up to his house. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you are happy, that is my reward, and good luck. What a god. What do you intend to do? Do? Don't be square. I'm going up there and sing his ears out right now. Well, wait a minute, kid. Let's, let's talk this over. Yeah, think about it. 
He'll probably give you that corny pass about becoming his housekeeper. The one you chomped on like a bass? Yeah, right out of the cotton into a bed of thorns. Are you crazy? No. I've got ambition, that's all. Is that what you call it? You're not going up there to his house. I certainly am. But you heard what Lilibet said. Sour grapes. She got tossed out of the nest. Oh, and, and what are you? The next candidate? Don't be dirty-minded. Oh, it's hard not he to, Mamie. Real and, hard. And I don't think Mr. Trop's that kind. Oh, wow. I can take care of myself. Oh, yes. You can take care of yourself. Never I take help from a guy named Pinky. A That's your first mistake. Oh, Penny kid. Stop calling me kid. I'm older than you, and besides yeah. you... Yeah. In one way, you were born before I was. And? Oh, listen, Penny, don't be a sucker. The only way to get a booking is is through an agent or a producer or somebody like that. Yeah, dream get on. Get this, will you? Look, we serve out our 30 days, and, and then we go on to Hollywood like we planned. You listen. Will you stop trying to keep me under an umbrella? I'm my own umbrella. I'm going to be way out in front of those people. I know I've got what it takes, and, and if Mr. Trump can help me, can get things started, so much the better. Oh, you can trust me, Janie. I'm not going to make any nasty bargains, no matter what. Unless your name comes up. Ability, you don't have to. Oh, I trust you. Listen, you know that. I trust your intentions. But when a sharpie gets to working on you, you never see through him. You those little smoked you think fish? All men are dear little Cub Scouts. Well, that's what you think, I think. We well, are not interfering this time. Hmm, I wonder what she wanted. It was that rat food we had for chow anyway? Uh, but you had a rat food. Once. Life's I a bowl of filth, man. Look into the face of death. It's the only way, baby. <clears throat> What are you Sorry. now? It's Napoleon. I'll just uh, put this fifth under the seat here. <laughs> I love that. Didn't get enough in the chow line, eh, Bob? I've been looking for these. These are my mom's peaches. Oh, you got, uh, you got a little uh, something up there. Yeah, got, got, it. got it. What's the matter, Janie? I'm in prison. You happen to have a knife? What for? I might have to stick it in somebody. Oh, now that'd be a little antisocial, wouldn't it? Not where well, I come from. It's funny. Penny went up to the boss's house and she's still there. And it doesn't take an hour and a half to sing a song. Maybe it's well, Aida. Why don't you go up and get her? No, I can't. Penny and I... Oh, forget it. I forgot you're on the other side. What other side? The side of the judge that sent us up here. Sauron's dark army? Who happens to be your mom. Okay. Like you said, let's forget it. Well, don't get me wrong. Penny's okay. She's just, well, she's just a sucker for a line. Oh, really? Look, couldn't you maybe go up there and, and pretend to want to see Mr. Trop? Well, not very well, not without some reason. You see, I'm a method actor. But I think I have one. Oh, good. On one condition. You push me around in a wheelbarrow dressed as a Spartan. That you don't go jumping to any conclusions about what side I'm on. It's a deal. Well, thanks. And you can't be that naive, Penny. I just don't believe you. After all, I didn't send for you. I didn't offer to hear you sing. You came up here of your own free will. You promoted yourself with Pinky to have him call. No. Now, just a yeah. minute. I haven't finished. All right. You came and I heard you. And I promised to phone our station manager in the morning. I'm very grateful, Mr. Trapp. That's not enough, Penny. There's, There's still that wheelbarrow thing. Turn right 
right now. Life is a matter of horse trading. There's winnies and losers. A favors for favors. Puff, snowball, down. Uh, those are my hormones. That'd be the pizza I ordered. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you so late, Mr. Yes, Tom. it's late. That's what I said. Time at the dog's room. You know, even though you're a paid hand living with the foreman, these dogs wouldn't know that. Well, what if yeah. we told them? Uh, Landis tell you about that girl on his crew? What girl? Well, I don't know her name. They just call her Baby. Yeah, she... what about her? Well, she almost passed out in the field. She looks pretty sick. She might have a bad heart. I think you are. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll, I'll have her heart replaced in the morning. Good night. I'll just be out here if you need me. You two love the rich taste of field hands, so here's a little snacky poo for you. All right. Go. No. Hey, save me a wing. Good thing I left my dog beater over here. Calm down, dogs can't climb ladders. Boy, to think she I jumped up there. You. The dogs don't like it. Got a dangerous in there, Mr. Crop, when those dogs run around loose. Come on. You were trying to run away, were you? That's a lie. They chased me up there. Get to your quarters. Suppose they ate your homework, too. Uh, should I get your chin wax, sir? That guy was sneaking around down behind the kitchen, checking the tin cans to see what kind of food you're feeding. What business is it of his? Maybe he's a nutritionist. Yeah. Your sister you says you're really a sucker for a line. I got away from him. You mean you had to? He doesn't waste much time, does he? So he set the dogs on me. Well, I'll kill him, so help me. No, wait a minute. That won't do any good. Nobody will be able to help you then. Especially not him. He'll be Come dead. On, <laughs> See him. She'll kill him. <laughs> Come on, let's go. You know, it's a lot easier if you took the guitar off at least once. Hey, you can't dance through the band. Get back here. How much? Nine bucks. What are you, Hans Brinker, all of a sudden? You want them or not? You go buy them there, then. Fat chance. I gotta have them charge it, Buster. And don't forget. You don't leave the ranch until you're paid up, even if your time's up. And I thought Lincoln got rid of slavery. Yeah, he's right over there working on it. Getting rid of slavery, yeah, really groovy, man. I don't like you. All right, closing time. Everybody out. No dancing. Not the party. Them boys is awful quiet. Greg, don't do it. Ow! <laughs> That'll teach you. Don't mess with the light. Hey, Greg's got childbearing hips. Eek! He's used to living with boys. Chicken. Honey, when I do a strip, I get paid for it. Ah. Oh, Russ, you're wonderful. Thanks, Grandma. What about you? Between this moon and you, I 
Don't know which one is I'm which. Gonna... Wear a necktie next time so I'll know who's you. About Bob. You know, he's been working a week now, and well, there's been a couple of things that I've noticed. Well, he works hard. He's good on that harvester, too. It's a tricky machine. <laughs> and I like Bob. A lot. Oh, I knew you would. Everybody does. But look, we both can't have a hole in our heads. That would make us bowling balls. Honey, do we have to talk about this now? Well, that's one of the reasons, one of the things that... Look, this has got to be settled. What you mean is you wanted to talk about Bob. Well, I'm using you, you to get to him. Me. No, baby, of course not. I wanted to have some time with you alone. Look, leave me, kid, and I, I'm thinking about you. But Bob's no kid. He's, he's inquisitive. He's been around. Now he's got to figure out our setup. Setup? Don't use that term, Russ. That's a gangster's term. What we're doing is absolutely legal. Uh, except for the parts that aren't. Yeah, we saw to that. But your boy, my dear. Is a do-gooder. Don't be a don't be. And when he comprehends this setup, uh, the situation, I mean, he's liable to hate you. Now I'm thinking of you, kitten. He's your boy. You asked me to put him to work, and I wouldn't fire him for the world. But I don't want him to end up hating you. Kill him. No. He's evil and must be destroyed. I think you're right, Russ. I think it would be better if, uh, if Bob were put to sleep if he had other interests oh, nothing matters but you and us together all three of us oh kiss me i can't go on this way my lunch is coming oh. wow some boys just have bites reaper man Watch modern technology rip through this field of teenage girls. It's Reaper Madness. Hey, you just harvested his sister. Look all beets. Not beets, cotton. You just fall off a turnip truck or something? I didn't mean for you to drink it, you silly woman. It's kerosene. Funny, I'm huh? Working at the head of the crew. Oh, good. I thought maybe that crocodile trop got her. Well, you don't seem worried about him getting me. No, I don't have to worry about you. You can take care of yourself, you little wildcat. You little buffalo. Thanks, Bob. You're real gone. Well, thanks. I'm no expert, like but I'm pretty sure I'm still here. Yeah, you're you're real gone yourself. They're both gone. What happened? What happened They're left. Her? Medic! Combine got another one. You better get this girl to a doctor. Are you bossing this crew? No, you are, Wino. Uh, the name's Dave. Dave Wino. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm taking her to a doctor. In your truck. Not in any company car, you ain't. Get back to your muscatel, creep. Hey, it's Morgan David. Don't call me creep. Hey, you want a spritzer? Stamp all foremen, dead out. Well, now everybody's gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the Perina Test Kitchens. Well, I pulled her teeth. Is that what you wanted? I'm sorry. I have some very bad news for you. I'm not a real doctor. She's not my wife. She works on the same ranch I do. Oh. Well, the girl was five months pregnant. She died of a severe hemorrhage after a miscarriage. Mm. Must have started while you were bringing her here. Gee, I'm sorry we even made yeah, fun of this movie. She's lying in the truck moaning. Five months pregnant. Yeah, the poor kid. Well, we did everything we could. We, we were just too late. And we're not real doctors. Do you mind giving Miss Duff the information for the death certificate? No. I didn't even know her name. She baby is all we ever called her. She, she worked as a cotton picker for Mr. Trop out in Welling Springs. Oh. Hey, you got nothing well, to explain to me, pal. Well, now, and we'll get in touch with him. Uh, is there anything else I can do? No. We'll have to get off my counter. And find out what the family wants to do. 
Well, thank you uh, for, for everything you've done. Or didn't do. Wonder what he wanted. Meanwhile, at stately Wayne Manor. And she was five months pregnant. She was just a kid herself. Baby, we called her. Nobody even knew her name. That's the worst part about it. She, she dies in a strange place without friends or anybody, and nobody even knows her name. Oh, she should have died at Cheers. Then everyone would have known her name. If only I had known. Well, why didn't you? What, why didn't somebody? Well, Mr. Trapp is supposed to see that everyone has a medical exam before they're sent into the field. Oh, he no, does it, it himself. Done. Well, it was part of the agreement. I, I mean, our uh, illegal law. contract. Mother, I don't care about the law, and I don't think you will either. Not after I tell you a few of the things that are going on out at Mr. Trapp's private little kingdom. Wheelbarrows everywhere. Look, you're a judge. I'll You've be got a job to do on the bench. Okay. Suppose I came before you. Do you think you'd be doing me a favor by sending me out to this ranch? No, I go because I've got to. I live in a shack. I sleep on a canvas cot. There are four wash basins and two showers for 20 guys. Which is great. And that healthy food that I'm paying for. You know what I found out about that food? Trop's feeding canned dog food and he calls it beef stew. Oh, no. Not no, canned. It should be dry. Like That's that. part of the agreement. What do you mean he wouldn't? He's doing it. Mother, I saw the empty cans. I guess you didn't know this was going on, did you? No, or maybe Mr. Trout doesn't. Oh, he knows every move that's made. Well, Bob, it's... It's, uh... It's just that... Russ is very ambitious. When did you sure. start calling him Russ? He's got a bunch of people assigned to him on your orders. They're helpless. He gets them for six bits a day and feeds them slop. It's not slop. It's science, diet, and it's very you expensive, a young, young man. a girl like Janie Lowe. She's no more a vagrant than you are. And she could tell you a couple of things that open your eyes about how it is to be under the thumb of a guy like this Trump. Bob. I can't help myself. No, but you can stop sentencing people to his ranch. Look, Mother, don't take my word for it. Have the sheriff make an Bob. investigation. Have, tell the editor of the newspaper. Sing it from the mountaintops. What did you say? You can't help yourself. I'm in love with Russ Trump. Mom, love's a pretty big word. He's my husband. Oh, husband's a pretty big word, too. You don't what mean did you that. say? We were married four months ago. Wait, you so never, you're my grandma, my sister, me. my mom? Did you marry I Bill Wyman? Oh, do. You never told anybody, I guess. You don't even live together. <laughs> Mother, that I doesn't like you. You've, you've, you've never been sneaky. It must have been his idea, so... You're learning. Keep it so up, So people wouldn't find out. Oh, Mother, I'm... I'm so sorry for you. Don't be. <laughs> Please don't think of me like that. But now I'm starting to like no, you. Bob, but... Things will work out all right. Sure, just keep telling yourself and that. has lots of good qualities. Truth is, Mom, you've been taken yeah. for one long, hard ride. Sure he has, to you, I, I just haven't been able to find any. I, I was hoping you and Russ would hit it off. Well, he did punch me once. <laughs> Bob, you said something when you first came home about wanting to go up to Montana. Oh, you mean that thing about Montana? Maybe that would be better for now. We'll, uh, I'll pay you. They fare. look like an evolution no, chart. Uh, well, thank you, Mom. I, I'll pay my own way. Well, that would be fair. Mom, could you make me a sandwich? Good luck, Mother. Oh, man, I'm not getting paid Mom. enough. Mom! Love me. Jim. I, Love me. I want you to... Yeah? Anything I can help you with in here, ma'am? order blank. I'm going to send you on an errand. Up to Mount Pilot? Yes, yes, okay, yes. I'll go get my one bullet.
Hey, Greg Brady's leading the group. Yeah. What's the idea of taking that girl off this place without permission? Where is she? I don't she? know. Something to do. She's dead. <laughs> well, when could she be back on the job? Well, what do you expect me to do? Break up? She was gonna have a baby. Well, I didn't know she was pregnant. No, but you knew something was wrong. I warned you. The fields killed her, Mac. Hey, Your call me Big Mac. just about enough out of you, Buster. You're not kidding. It's the last word. I'm checking off the place. No, that was the last word. Hiya, Greg. Hi, Jenny. Hi, other girl. They didn't cock that float very well. I heard what you said. It's awful about baby. She, she didn't even have a chance. Why couldn't she have said something to somebody? I don't know, Jenny. Maybe she was... Rock stupid. Maybe she was ashamed of... Hey, Joel, I was kind of wondering, scared. what does real cotton feel like? Oh, Some people never seem to learn to is. stick up for Hey, themselves. Gypsy, come on into the theater. Gypsy? My book hey, is Gypsy. Okay, look up at the screen. Remember when they showed the cotton? Use your teledyne vector to figure it out. Will you reproduce some cotton for us? True, what you told us to you really check it out? Okay, uh... Oh, gross. Oh, it's not done yet, Joel. Uh, Jitsu, will you run up to the, uh, to the, to the main ship and, uh, make some new, make a new batch for us? Just put it on the main table there, yep. have to get out of here. It's like fluffy pudding. Yee. Probably back home to Decoy. I'd like to see you again. Lots of times. Oh, and then sure, stop Bob. abruptly, breaking your heart like too. a toy. But if you go, this I, stuff smells, Joel. I may never see you again. Mmm. 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 Tastes like juicy fruit and pizza. I'm not worried about that. You'll never get lost. As long as you have a compass and a dream. You know, honey, before you said about you being stuck here and that I'm trying to run away. Well, I'm not leaving. I'm gonna stay. And then stay some more. The trop will have to throw me off the place. I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna look after you. And I'm gonna take care of that guy Trop too. And then I'm going to replant the whole forest, Ben. See, he's greedy. He's going to spill himself. And when he does, I'll nail him. So help me, I'll nail him to the wall. Oh, use drywall screws. They're much better. Janie! The last trailer's oh, leaving. We better get Come on! on. Hey, look at that. That's some trailer. I bet that cotton's finished, too, up there. Gypsy, honey, look at this. You are sick, aren't you? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, hey, honey, Joe, this down. is great. Down, girl. This oh. is great. Kawabunga! I feel like Rosemary Clooney in White Christmas. Having a little trouble with that uh, gypsy unit, huh? Yeah, it's something with her off switch, I think. I can't get it to stop. Oh, uh, the weather on. outside is frightful. Hey, this is great. The weather outside, <laughs> I know a wiener man. Maybe you, you should have her uh, fabricate cool. something less messy, like uh, saltwater taffy. Oh, I don't think that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. just great, Tom. That's just great. I've got a sick robot on my hands, and all you do is give me more stupid commands. <laughs> to deal with. Oh, we've got a mess. Maybe she should uh, bring up some paper towel. Oh, oh, this is great. Yeah. Tom, that's it. Get out. No, I'm just having some fun. Out. Can't take advantage of a robot anymore. Would you get out of here? Stupid human. Hey, get Jensen, out. Make another Tom Servo. Leave me alone. Oh. Happy birthday. Hey, I feel like Rosemary Clooney. Uh, Joel, Crow, how are you? Get ya? out of here. Hey. Hey, I don't care if you're a second generation Tom Servo, get out! Did you notice there's a commercial sign there? I gotta go. Oh, that's great. <laughs> we got commercial outside. sign. I'm sorry, Tom, but that other Tom is going to have to be destroyed. Yes, well, you didn't have to. I needed a friend. You didn't have to dismantle him. Crow, come on. Get out of here. Cut that out. Crawl. Brother. And the shower. Sorry. All the conveniences. Nice cold dribbling water. 
But Bob didn't tell you everything. We... The rankest thing of all about the boss and the girls. You mean Angelo? No, no, I, I mean the boss, that trop. Boy, is he rank. Do you know what you're saying, young lady? Do you? Did I stutter or something, Grandma? Truth, or are you spreading malicious gossip? Malicious I can give you truth. Of proof. Proof of what? Ask my sister Penny. He got her up to his house and was going to get her on TV, and then he tried to make a pass at her. But she fumbled on the fourth down. Go on. Well, then there was and more bad Lillard. stuff. Real bad. He was his housekeeper, living at the house with him. It's one way of getting out of picking cotton. But what a way. Got it. What, Damn roaches. What, what did I do? What, what did I say? It's nothing that you did. You come along with me. Number. Hot damn. Baby. They all sound you the same. Think you're smart. You may think you're so I think she's going to incite a riot. Can hey, someone get some animal tranquilizers? Well, you know, maybe that dog food is good for him. She's really got a shiny coat. It's a high pro glow. She's just reading the stage directions. Nice lighting. She's the one who caused all that trouble at Attica. Yikes. You're so sure your my desire, but you should be told. I'm in love. Even with a blazing fire, a really you body. won't leave me cold. But you're a slimy baby as a salamander slip and slide away. Why am I here, you guys? This just validated my existence. <laughs> she uses more peroxide in her hair than an entire mash unit. Oh, thanks. This is like the Las Vegas prison camp, I think. Las Vegas. Another example of great lighting. Oobly out of baby. Pow, pow, pow. All right, that's lunch, everybody. It's the deli tray. Try and look smart. Okay, let's... I said look smart. Penny? Oh, excuse me, kids. Come on, kids, let's go. Another one. Where's Janie? I've been looking all over for her. Oh, we sold her into slavery for some magic she... beans. Why? Then she got in a car with him and they drove off. They went off the ranch? Sure. Out into the highway and toward Cahila City. Who was he? We had on a suntan uniform. You mean he was and he naked? Angelo paper, and Angelo let Janie go. Oh. Oh? What? I think I know. Come on, Penny. I know you a wiener man. He owns a hot dog stand. What do you intend to do, Judge Steele? And who are all these guys on the I'm floor? I'm going to try to clean up a mess for which I'm partly responsible. I'm sorry. You're sorry? I'm but stepping on cameraman left and right in this things. shot. I ask you for the truth. I think you gave it to me. I just didn't think it was going to be so hard to take. I had no idea the steering wheel would be this big. Hey, that guy's great. Oh, it's Greg, 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 Greg Brady again. We like him. You can make me cry. can shake the stars right out of the sky. One for Servo. She's doing a cover of that other guy's song. You think I look good? I do. Yeah, you could make a good whiskey decanter. Coming in on the field road. It's because of my BVDs. 9.30. Those people turned in. Fluffy, crotch, bad. Here comes Sheriff Taylor. It's a sheriff's car. How can you tell? The car that they took Jenny away in, was it marked? I don't think so. I don't remember. I'm gonna check into this. All right, everybody. Turn in. You better go turn in. 
No. Turn into Not what? Until I find out what's to <laughs> okay, so tell me something and be honest. Do I really look like Colonel Tom Parker? in America's tractor pavilion, scenic Shano, Wisconsin. That's a really tall tractor. Quick, hop behind the manure spreader. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's the man? Yeah, but he only speaks Spanish. Oh, so much the better. I'm so sorry, he's from Barcelona. Buenas noches, señor bro. Who's the greaser behind the uh, manure spreader? Looks like James Dean. Looks more like Jimmy Dean, rebel without a sausage. Go get margarine and hurry. Frozen or on the rocks? if anyone comes. Come on, Margarita. I love that man. What is he saying? He mumbled something about shooting the kid behind the tractor and I couldn't make out the rest. But yes. It's a fajita recipe. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. El permiso es de entrada para trabajar. Migration permits to work. Okay, good. Now let's move on to the chapter on making friends. El precio, señor, tres mil dólares. Okay. Oh, sorry about the garbage can. We'll just be going. Posh, puff, sick. Really mess up the savages. Go, boys. Let's get out of here, Scooby. Ooh, have you had your teeth clean, little fella? Big tartar build up there. Oh, they're just mad because those humans got to eat all the dog food. Joan Collins. Cut. Okay, that's a wrap. Get the dog off. Okay, nice scene, everyone. Uh, let's get home. We've got another scene to do in the morning. That wasn't in the script. It is now. They're really Hold embellishing it. here, aren't they? Entiende español? ¿Qué hace usted aquí? ¿Es su novio él? Sí, es mi novio. She's lying. He's not a lover. He's a fighter. Come on. Sit. Me or the dogs? This kid here understands Spanish. When you take Morales over the border, take these kids along with you and get rid of them down there. Oh, no, wait, Russ. That's going too far. You want us to end up in the federal clink? There's no time to argue. Mr. Maytag man. Somebody else too. You don't have to get your hands dirty. You go along too. I'm a hummer, I'm a shuma, I'm a luna bag, I'm a sassy ass man. I'm a hummer, I'm a hummer, I'm a hummer. I'm a hummer. It's a big production number. Get them in the car, I'll handle these monkeys. Looks like there could be a rumble. This is a mutiny, a riot. Now go on back to your quarters. Find yourself back in jail. We'll take the jail. You set your dogs in two of our people, Mr. Trav. We don't like that. Look, boss, I like hounds as well as anybody. Those dogs are killers. You know, if I wasn't sure Greg Without Brady you? was a guy, I'd uh, snap out of it. Okay. <laughs> 
Drive through him. Let him down. Oh, great. Finally, a good job. Cast from a Tobey Hooper film. Oh, little punk hit me with a Nerf ball. Come on, Officer Krupke. Right. You want a riot? I'll give you a riot. Grr. Get to bed before somebody gets killed. That'll be enough of that, Mitch Bowers. Put what up that gun. What do you want, Aunt B? And so, Manuel Noriega quickly seizes the opportunity to make his escape. That ought to hold him right in the Nunzio. Hold him, hold him, grab him, grab him. Keep holding him, give him a wedgie. Yeah. I certainly am glad you're here, Judge Steele. There's been a mutiny, a riot. Now, as you can Stop see, all these people... What's this all about, Bob? This guy's a coyote. He's bringing 300 wetbacks from over the border on Trop's orders. Get some towels. He's already got the phony permits for them. On him. Cecile, look, as you can see, there's been a riot. Search him, Mitch. Yeah, yeah. Sir, sir. yeah I'll want to search him. We will. Yeah, man. Wait a minute, these are stills from yards of leather. Take them into custody. That's yeah. Right. Do your duty. To God and your country. Obey the law of the pack. I've just learned tonight of some of the conditions you've been living under. I read your contract. You I can't believe you're working for this. The county. So does the county have an obligation to pay to you as prisoners? I'm going to have you all in the court in the morning. If it's the last thing I do as a judge, it will be to commute your sentences to time served. Then we're going to do a show. And it will be the last thing I do as a judge. Because I just got a reading for murder, she wrote. I think we might need a few temporary deputies. Bob. Find some for me. And you, and you, and you. And Scarecrow and the rest Raise of you. Right hands. Man, oh man, this is wild, isn't it? <laughs> Crazy. This is what deputies do? Great. I think so. Only they're usually parked at a Mr. Donut doing it. Hey, MTV, Mexican television. <laughs> David Byrne's new band. Sing the chorus. Everybody think the Calypso song. Come Mamie from made it. Trinidad. Auntie I'm Mamie. Tell you that's all wrong. Trinidad's been had. We gonna tell you that the Calypso no more come from Jamaica. Hello, boys. If I'd known you were coming out of baked uh, rum cake. I'm putting up with this. She's got neat underwear in this one. Nice diapers. They're huggies, all right. This must be the theme song of the Cousteau Society. Yes, New York. And so we leave the cave of the giant barracuda. <laughs> As we saw in the film, we are reminded of our tiny friends of Mimi Van Dorian. How was that? Great. Close? Yeah. Good I'm working on it. That was my Chinese gangster impression. This is probably the longest minute in film history. You realize that? You don't even have to look up her skirt, it's open. Okay, God. Shake the banana. Come on, boys, and carry my bananas. What in the world does that mean? Carry my bananas? I don't want to know. It's a metaphor. Everybody, go. Go, so go. Go, Hey, look at Go, so go. Sing the chorus. Calypso, girl, she pretty bear. So that's what the Tijuana Brass is doing. Not a thing. Wow. 
Come on, Gun, sing Red Joe. I don't dig jokers, he don't go. Tell us, Gun, why you shake the hips so. Cause I'm gonna run. He looks so lat, too. So me so do they. I take the money. I get the jiggles. Mm -hmm. Everything wiggles. You wouldn't know that to look at her. Everyone can live so. I feel like I'm in the tiki room. I wish I were. You got the profile for it. Thank you. Oh, Come over. Well, there she is, folks. Penny Lowe. Your pants are on that fire. That lady is going oh. a long ways. You know. My sentiments hey. exactly. Do you think you're gonna miss it? being up there with Penny? The the applause and all. Oh, I'd miss you much, much more. Then what? I'd rather be here. Prison? Well, we're both gone, you know. Bob, the foreman wants you at the Q Ranch. Something about one of the machines. Oh, okay. And he wants to run you over hey. with it. Can I go with you? Well, you better say that. You know, you can't start too early if you're going to be a cotton-picking rancher's wife. <laughs> hey, watch your <laughs> mouth, pal. Bye, I guess we'd best be going too, huh? Yeah, let's, let's get real gone. Let's mosey. daddy -o. Go, 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 the Calypso. Go, go, the Calypso. Go, 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 the Calypso. Go. Joel, I hope we're not interrupting anything. Oh, not at all. Uh, can I get you some ram chips or something? Oh, no, just uh, ate. Yeah, stuffed. Couldn't eat another bite. Oh. Okay, well, what can I do you for? Oh, well, we were down in the galley playing freeze tag, and uh, we started wondering about that goofy mutant Charlie Callis guy in the film. You know, that bespectacled weenie that no one would dance with? Yeah. What's right, the story right, on him? Right, I think I know what you mean. Kamba, could you put up frame 232.5, and uh, I think it's somewhere around there. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's the guy. Look at him. Poor sap. Probably has a family. Yeah, so Joe, what's the point of having this guy in the film? What's his purpose? Well, I thought you might want to know, so I got us all goofy hats to wear. Oh, Everybody great. gets one, and you get this one. And I got myself right. some glasses. You guys can't wear glasses because you don't really have eyes to speak of. And then the goofy hat is, the goofy friend is the guy who wears his hat sideways like this and always gets killed first in the haunted house. Like, guys? Guys, hey, this isn't funny anymore. Guys! Oh, yeah. so yeah. it's like, guys? Hey, guys. come on. Guys. Don't guys. Ah! Yeah, you got it. Cool. Hey, Joel, this is kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, okay, so like, uh, what else does he do? What's his point, though? Well, the goofy guy is around to irritate the audience, so they build up a real lot of resentment, so nobody's hurt when he gets off. Oh. oh. Yeah. Now, let's end up with the goofy dance, okay? Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Anyway, you're catching on. Anyway, I, lost my hat. I thought it's almost time for the experiment to get done with it. I thought maybe we could do some letters, okay? Uh. All right, let's see here. Let's see. This one is from Cheryl Watson in Shreveport, Louisiana. And she says, Camba, could you put it up on the screen? To the man and the two robots, I love your show. I came home one Saturday night and tuned on the TV. Turned on the TV. I had no idea what I was watching, but it was hilarious. Wow. So I didn't care. Normally I watch Saturday Night Live on Saturday, but now I watch wow. MST 3000. Live Yay. from space, it's us! Right. Anyway, we got one more here. And Cambot, you want to put this one up on the screen there? Good. Oh, this one is from a woman named D. Says, Dear Joel, Servo, and Crow, greetings, guys. Uh, Joel, you are one talented human, and I'm glad you decided to give Crow and Servo a free will. Well, thanks for noticing. And Aww. Crow, Servo, I love you, little bots. Keep on doing those group parodies of those moldy, oldy movies, okay? I love your little bot, too. Stroke of genius. Neither. And that's from a woman named We. Cool. Love We. That's love us, we. I think. I think it's us. Anyway, so. 
Cambot, why don't we put up the information for the Information Club? And Tom Servo, you want to give them our address? That's right. It's the MST 3000 Information Club, P.O. Box 5325, uh, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Be the smartest guy on your block. Have the biggest brain on your block by becoming a member of the MST 3000 Information Club. Anyway, that's the end of the experiment, sirs. What do you think? You know, I think we should keep the Mamie Van Doren films to ourselves. And I think you should file this. Until next time, double stuff. <laughs>